In today's climate, nothing will make you a more accurate or confident shooter than Crimson Trace laser sighting systems. Get the immediate, decisive advantage of the world's only grip-integrated laser sights today. Shoot better. Stay safer. Crimson Trace. Today on Gun Talk, Tom corrects incorrect gun rights info making the rounds on the web. We'll discuss the surge in buying small guns and just how good those little pistols are. And we'll have a big announcement for another Gun Talk giveaway. Plus, you can add to the knowledge base with a range report or just call in to talk up your favorite gun. Call now at 866-TALK-GUN. Now, stand by for Tom and lock and load. Oh, did I ever have a fun week. I just can hardly wait to tell you about what we did. It was... uh, we did some fun stuff, some good things, some totally silly things out at the range that I have to share with you. A lot of things going on. We'll have some news today. Um, let's see. We have products we're going to be giving away. We're going to have... You know what? Sometimes, honestly, we get a little carried away, especially when we start forwarding all these emails we get. Oh, yeah, that's a gun rights thing. Well, sometimes we screw it up, and we're going to have a report about probably something that you've gotten in your email box, and that a real good chance you forwarded it and sent it to other people. Specifically about gun confiscation going on in Connecticut. Not happening. So uh, we'll have that news for you from somebody on the front lines there. A lot of things happening. Oh, by the way, if you'd like to join us, our number is 866-TALK-GUN. 866-TALK-GUN gets you in here. Uh, I am Tom at GunTalk.com. Also on Twitter, it's at GunTalk. We will uh, be conversing over there if you'd like to join us. If you, you know what? You could actually post something on Twitter. And we'll see it, and if it's a question, we'll throw it out here on the air. We'll see if we can get some help. A lot of times we, we depend upon a little help from our friends, folks who say, well, Tom, I'm surprised you didn't know. The 9 millimeter Lago was the official cartridge of the Spanish Army. Well, yeah, I didn't know that one until somebody filled me in here. A lot of things, there's so many things to know about guns and shooting and Shotguns, rifles, handguns, cartridges, and you go back 100 years and more, no one can know it all. But all of us put together probably have a pretty good idea about a lot of it, which is why you'll often hear me asking for help. Saying, hey, guys, I don't know this one. Help me out. Also, the other thing that's interesting, and this has been a huge change in the almost 20 years now we've been doing this, we have roughly, we think, A third of our listeners for Gun Talk are women these days. Hmm. That is a big change, but it is also reflective of the change in the demographics of firearms buying and also of carry permits. About a third of the people getting carry permits now are women. About a third of the people buying first-time guns are women. And, of course, they're listening to Gun Talk. I'd love to know... If you're a woman who got into guns recently, recently being like, oh, last five years or so, what happened? What was your motivation? What was your tipping point? And once you got there, what was the process? Because it's not not as easy as some people might think. We would like to say, oh, yeah, it's it's easy. Just go into a gun store and buy a gun. Yeah, it's great if you know something about this stuff. If you don't, it's intimidating. 38 special, but you can shoot it in a 357 Magnum. But always use the cartridge that's stamped on the side of the gun and never swap them out. But you just told me I could shoot a 38 and a 357. Yeah, well, that's true in that case. Really? Okay. Huh. All right. Uh, I want a 45. Will that be a 45 Colt? Yes. Was well, that a 45 Long Colt or is that a 45 ACP? Huh? Hmm. Huh. Well, do you want a revolver or an automatic? I think I want a revolver. Yeah, but you really ought to have an automatic. No, you really ought to have a snub nose thirty eight because that's better for ladies. Really? Might be. In many cases, not. It's quite the gauntlet to have to run for anybody who gets into this. It's one of the things we hope that we help with. If you go to uh, GunTalk.com, or actually, better still, go to uh, GunTalk.com. TV. We have hundreds of videos to help you understand this stuff. What is a revolver? What is a semi-automatic? What is a caliber? 
what does 38 mean? What does 9 millimeter mean? What is all this stuff? We've got lots and lots of videos, how-to videos for beginners, and then we hope to take you from that up to wherever you want to go, frankly, however good and accomplished and skilled you would like to be. Gun Talk dot TV. Also, our Gun Talk channel on YouTube has a lot of those. Uh, taking your calls, questions, comments, but if you're a, uh, a woman who has gotten into guns, I'd kind of like to know, what was it that got you there, and what was the process like, if you could describe that for us? 866-TALK-GUN. Line three, Brandon's with us out of Oklahoma. Hello, Brandon. Got our field report for us? Yeah, Tom. I got me a little Ruger LC9, and that thing is just sweet. Okay, tell me, um, why did of, you, what made you choose that in the first place? How'd you get to that point? Um, I got to that point when I, I'm kind of old school. I used to carry a J-frame. Mm-hmm. And it's just getting a little bulky to carry around. Right. I looked at, like, um, the little Kel-Tec P380 and the little Ruger LCP. I'm kind of a big guy, and that just don't really fit my hand that well. <laughs> right, they're, they're pretty small, yeah. And the LC9 is kind of a Goldilocks gun, man. It's a, a little bigger than the LCP, but a little smaller than the SR9. Not too big, not too small, and for you, it's just right. So how does it shoot for you? Um, it's The trigger pull for a double-action trigger pull is phenomenal. I mean, okay. on a pistol of that price point, I was honestly shocked, because I've actually shot quite a few kel and stuff, and... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Being kind of old school, I expected a polymer gun to be a polymer gun. Well, you mentioned that it's a double action trigger pull, and I think that's one of the things that surprises people because they're used to the type of trigger pull you get with a, a Glock, an LC9, an M and P, an XDS. This is a longer, more double action ish trigger pull, right? Yeah, but honestly, the the weight the weight's there a little bit, but it's mm-hmm. smooth. Yes, well, that's the whole thing, you know. And if it's smooth, it's controllable, which is all you're really looking for. Exactly. Hmm. Okay. So, how much have you shot it? I've put about a box through it. Okay. It's still it, fairly new. Yeah, you're still breaking it in. I would, you know, my deal is, and it, it may not. I, this may be me being old school and kind of a geezer. I don't know because I always used to say I'd like to have two or three hundred rounds through a, a gun before I would like to trust it, particularly semi-autos. But that may be thinking from twenty years ago. Uh, these days, it's fairly rare to find a gun that doesn't just run when you take it out of the box. Yeah, it's the the point of shoot was believe uh, just unbelievable, especially. Like, if, I, I'm not giving any insult to Caltech, but like the little P380s, when you go to those smaller pistols like that, there's not really much of a sight on them. Well, no, no. And, and look, they, they will tell you, uh, Ruger will tell you about the LCP, or, and Caltech will. That is a belly gun. I mean, it really is truly a belly gun, and that's all it's supposed to be. They're not making any pretense. I mean, the sights on there are more of a hint than anything else. Uh, so it's you know, to get you in the right spot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, a three eighty like that, the itty bitty ones. That's for when you're basically holding on to the guy with one hand and shooting him with the other hand. Uh, that's yeah. the kind of distance we're talking about. Well, look, I appreciate the uh, the fear report. I am glad that you really like that the LC nine. It is. It's been a real sweet gun for Ruger, and I think it fits a sweet spot for a lot of people. Brandon, thank you so much for the call. Uh, Ray on line two had in Oregon. He's got a comment or actually a question here. Hey, Ray. Hey, Tom, how you doing? You're moving. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah I got a qu- Yes, sir. Uh, I was living in a condo for about five years. Me and my wife, we kind of sort of downsized into a mobile home single wide. Okay. And my wife can't really hold anything, you know, bigger than a 12-gauge or you know, a 22 or something like that. We were thinking, what would be something good for a great for a mobile home situation single wide mm-hmm. you know as a home defense and i was kind of thinking i was reading mass of the Ubes, um he really likes the 20 gauge in a semi-auto bantam 
What do you it's think? Fu- it's funny you mention that. I was going to ask you if you'd considered a 20 gauge. I'm, and look, the choice between semi auto and pump is totally per- personal preference. But I got to tell you, I'm thinking that a 20 gauge, uh, I like the little Mossberg 20 gauge with the shorter stock, the Bantam uh, stock, for anybody, a man or a woman. It just is easier to maneuver. Uh, and for me, now I got to ask you: Is one of your concerns here uh, bullets going through the outside and going maybe into an adjacent mobile home? Exactly. Yeah, over penetrating. Sure. That would be just my biggest concern. I don't. I have a neighbor maybe about fifty yards down, and yeah. another one about a hundred yards up. Okay, I'm here's where I, this is what I would do. Okay, and every time I say this, I get emails that say you don't know what you're talking about. Fine, that's okay. I, I can live with that. If it were me, I would go with a 20 gauge with probably number seven and a half or number six birdshot. Uh, at the distances, you can't get a real long distance in a mobile home. So if you're using a gun in self defense in a mobile home, you're going to be inside of 10 yards, which is 30 feet. 30 feet's a long way in a single wide. I don't care you know, what the situation is. And it is completely and absolutely lethal at that distance. It is a great stopping load. And yet, if you blow that charge through the side of the mobile home, you're not going to go through anything else. I mean, if somebody were standing on the other side, yeah, they'd get peppered. But other than that, it's not going to go through another wall anywhere. If it hit the side of another trailer somewhere, it's just going to hit it and stop. Yeah, yeah, we're kind of sort of like out in the country, kind of. I mean, it's a, it's a park, but it doesn't look like a park. Right. But I was thinking as far as weight, you know, and, and Mass was mentioning something like on the Bantam. And you said number six, number seven? Yeah, something like that, six, seven and a half. Uh, I would use just birdshot. I would use a regular birdshot. Yeah. Load. Uh, and it, look, and there are going to be people who say, oh, yeah, you, that will never work because I saw this guy shooting into a box on the Internet. Great, fine, wonderful. Do what you got to do. I'm just telling you, I have shot all this stuff through multiple, multiple walls. And I can tell you that birdshot is amazingly good stopper up close. And it basically just doesn't go through secondary walls. That would be my choice in that situation. I think you're absolutely on the right track there, Ray. And listen, I, I wish you luck with it. 866-TALK-GUN, 866-TALK-GUN. My name's Tom Gresham. Shoot me an email, tom at guntalk.com. One machine, one operator. Each machine is run by a single pair of hands. Hands that spend all day, every day, learning the machine inside and out. We don't believe in quotas. The point is crafting faultless ammunition, no matter how long that takes. It's not quick or easy. Being the best never is. Black Hills Ammunition. It started with our hands. In the war on terror, fighting crime in the streets, in competition and homes around the world, one name in firearms stands out, Sig Sauer. Our pistols and rifles are renowned for their unfailing performance. This same commitment to excellence can be found in our line of SIGTAC accessories and the training offered by the SIG Sauer Academy. For unmatched quality, reliability, and innovation when it counts, choose SIG Sauer. Visit SIGSauer.com today. What do LaserMax customers say about LaserMax lasers? I'm alive because of your company. I was robbed at gunpoint. Two of my three shots hit their intended target, and I was able to remove the threat. I made it home to my wife, alive. For shooting accuracy and training, it's a life-saving tool critical to any firearm. I trust your products with my life. Thank you. To learn more about LaserMax, go to LaserMax.com. That's L-A-S-E-R-M-A-X.com. LaserMax. Hi, I'm Tom Gresham. For more than 40 years, I've been watching an environmental disaster in my backyard, and it actually impacts all sportsmen in America. I'm talking about the massive loss of land on the Louisiana coastline. The U.S. Geological Survey said the swamps and marshes of coastal Louisiana are among the nation's most fragile and valuable wetlands. 
That land is disappearing. The Mississippi River Delta hosts as many as 10 million ducks and geese every winter. These are birds which migrate northward through the states, all the way to Canada. The wetlands of the Delta support some of America's best fresh and saltwater fishing. And here's the deal. The wetlands of the Mississippi River Delta are disappearing at a rate of one football field every hour. One football field every hour. Gone. We can reconnect the river with its wetlands and restore the Delta, but we need your help. Please visit vanishingparadise.org. That's vanishingparadise.org. Hi, I'm Michael Bain. You know I hate cleaning guns, so anything that makes that job faster and easier is definitely a plus. And that's where bore tips come in. These reusable, lint-free cleaning swabs make cleaning a breeze. And the tighter-fitting bore tips do a better job on barrels than cotton mops or patches. Hey, it's a dirty job. Let bore tips help. To find a dealer, visit boretips.com. Questions? Comments? Please email Tom at GunTalk.com. During the show, you can call Tom at 866-TOM-TALK-GUN. Now, back to Gun Talk. Uh, probably some of you saw this. I sent it out on a tweet. By the way, if you really want to stay informed of what's going on and, and also be on top of some of the most interesting stories out there, you need to follow me on Twitter. It's real simple. You go on Twitter, and I'm at Gun Talk. One of the stories we sent out this morning, because uh, Jim here in the studio here, Jim Kenzie, sent me a note about it. Out of Detroit, a home intruder was shot dead after receiving several warnings from a homeowner. Police say the middle-aged homeowner saw a young man approaching her house in Detroit's Brightmore neighborhood with a brick Friday afternoon. She yelled for him to go away, but he continued to come toward the home. She went and got her handgun and again told him to go away. So she's telling this guy, go away, go away, go away. He keeps coming with a brick. Finally, uh, the man with the brick went to the side of the front door and started to break through the window, at which point she fired two shots, killing the suspect. He was coming through a window at the time he was shot. Now, here's quote of the month, at least. It may make the quote of the year. We'll see. This is from Lieutenant, Lieutenant uh, Jacqueline Pritchard of uh, Detroit Police Department. One of the risks of breaking into someone's home is the end result of being killed. So if it's not yours, then don't take it. All right, Lieutenant, way to go. Yes. Uh, there were some other quotes there. there some of the family members of the slain robber says, yes, uh, he had some felony uh, convictions and warrants out for him. And yes, he broke into a lot of houses, but he was a good kid. He just had a bad habit of breaking into homes. He was a good kid, but he had a bad habit of breaking into homes. Really? Wow. Uh, There's so much you could say about that and almost nothing that needs to be said. Line four, George is in San Antonio, Texas. Hello, George. You're on Gun Talk. Hey, Tom. How's it going? I'm good. What's this uh, about the uh, Nosler rifle? Yeah, uh, I'm in the market for a new 280 Ackley, and I've kind of narrowed it down to the Nosler Trophy Grade or the Melvin Forbes, their production model, the 24B. Mm -hmm. I was just kind of wondering if you had any experience with either of them. Actually, I've shot both of those guns. Uh, Melvin makes great rifles, and of course, his are the ultralight series, and they are very lightweight, and they also shoot really well. So he has figured out how to make rifles that are lightweight and are accurate. So that goes you know, to their favor. The Nasa rifles are gorgeous, and they shoot really well. I've had a chance to shoot those at some long-range uh, targets, some long range ranges, if you will. It's interesting you mentioned that. I am actually looking at getting one of the uh, Nosler uh, rifles into a the Ackley, weirdly enough, because they also, fortunately for me, make left-handed versions of them. And so uh, I'm actually, I've, I've got a note into them right now and seeing how what we can set up. I would like to get one of the wood-stocked ones because I like wood, but I don't know that they make the left-handed wood. I may end up having to go to synthetic. Are you thinking wood or synthetic? 
Uh, synthetic, just because I do a lot of spot and stalk. I'm down in South Texas, so we have exotics ah. and stuff. So mm -hmm. I love wood, but I just I hate getting scratches and nicks and nicks. <laughs> I know. Well, the, and the 280 Ackley, have you ever had a rifle chambered for that before? Uh, I have currently a Weatherby Mark V Ultralight in 280. The only thing is, is with my new job, I don't have a lot of time to hand load, and I've yet to find any commercial ammo with it that'll shoot better in about an inch and a half. Oh, huh. Okay. Well, now you know that Nosler makes ammo for that, for the 280 Ackley Improved. Right. Uh, I do. The only thing is that Mark V Ultralight that I have is a standard 280, and I kind of wanted right. a little bit more velocity, kind of to match the lower end on a 7 Max, so that's what I was going with the 280 Ackley. Sure. So that makes sense. I like that Weatherby. It's a great rifle, and I like the fact that it's lightweight because I'll travel to Colorado at least once a year and do some hunting there. And so that's why I kind of threw the, the Forbes rifle in the mix. I was just kind of, you know, there's about a six $700 price difference, you know, but from what mm -hmm. I can tell, both sides of the fence, you know, really like their rifles. I, you're, you're not, here's the thing. You're not going to go wrong either way. Melvin makes great rifles. Nosler makes great rifles. I think you got to just look at it and say, okay, which one do I like one the looks of? Is the, is the weight the determining factor? You know, you got to figure out where you want to be with it. You, one thing you may want to do is you may want to call out and talk to the guys at Nosler about their rifle and just uh, kind of get a little bit more information that's on their website. Uh, you could talk with them and they'll kind of fill you in on anything else you may want to know. They're awfully good about that. But it's just, I think it's interesting that you're looking at the exact same rifle that I am. I really want a 280 Ackley. That way you can always shoot regular 280 ammo in it if you need to. And then if you have it, you can shoot the 280 Ackley ammo, which is going to give you another 100, 150 feet per second, something like that. George, uh, look, after you, after you make sure you, after you get this, make sure you call me and let me know what you decide, because I'm very interested in how you end up. Uh, yeah, Melvin is a great guy, shoots really well. I mean, do not get into a shooting contest with that guy. He really knows his stuff. He makes wonderful rifles. And, of course, anything with Nosler on it is going to be good. You have the ammo and the rifles. A lot of people don't know that Nosler makes rifles. So check out their website, Nosler.com. They've got uh, a bunch of different rifles, uh, lightweight, uh, long-range, chambered for different things. And, of course, now they've got the 26 Nosler, the new 6.5 caliber cartridge that is, what, 3,400 feet per second with a 129-grain bullet. Outstanding. So, anyway, kind of pay your money and you take your chances or make your choice anyway. Hey, don't go anywhere. When we come back, we're going to be talking about giving away stuff. You do not want to miss this one. And, then, frankly, it's probably something you really do want. 866-TALK-GUN. Have you taken your family, friends, and kids shooting lately? You're listening to Tom Gresham's Gun Talk, and we'll be right back. Want to be a guest on the show? Drop us a line at info at guntalk.com. You're listening to Gun Talk with Tom Gresham. Always fun to give things away. And, uh, well, heck, we give things away every month, it seems like, around here. we got to announce our latest giveaway. Joining us right now is Tom Donegal from Console Vault. Hey, Tom, how you doing, man? Hey, absolutely fabulous, Tom. Great to be on again. Well, appreciate it. Uh, Console Vault, great company. You guys make a wonderful product, and more and more I uh, appreciate what you do. Uh, these are uh, locking consoles that go in. I mean, you have some other things, but the Console Vault, the one that I really like, is the one that goes inside your SUV or your truck where you can lock up your valuables or a gun or whatever, and it's uh, pretty simple in and out, right? It's very simple, Tom. Just... We've got uh, about 54 products right now, and I would say the vast majority of them, you're into it maybe five, eight, ten minutes absolute tops. They're designed for easy installation and high security. So this is not, I guess we ought to explain, the console vault is not just a lock that you stick on the console of your vehicle. You know, no. It's, it, an, it's it, an actual it, vault. It, in most cases, it's an actual steel box, 12-gauge, heavy-duty plate steel. And uh, 
in some cases, we have what we call console covers or our hybrid models where it isn't practical or we have curvatures and things that you can't really form ah. steel to within. Right. But um, they all have the, the same element of high security. And I'll tell you, Tom, when, when it comes to security, our products absolutely cannot be beat. i got to imagine you've gotten some stories back of people who put them in and were glad that they did. We get those on a continual basis, and I'll tell you, there's nothing that makes us more proud, Tom. And a lot of these are posted on the uh, on our website. Uh, people from Gun Talk can read these, and it's uh, you know it's just really gratifying. We don't compromise on our products whatsoever, and uh, we put a lot of energy into the quality of them and the ease of installation. And Tom, they absolutely work. And when you need to leave something important, something crucial like your handgun in your vehicle. This is the product that you must have. All right, Console Vault, C-O-N-S-O-L-E, vault.com. Where, where are you guys located, Tom? We are located in sunny Las Vegas, Tom, and it, oh. <laughs> we're, we're proud to be in Nevada, and uh, there's, uh, you know, there's a lot of advantages weather-wise. Uh, great people sure. live in Nevada, and uh, uh, obviously we ship to all uh, 50 states and uh, Canada. But, um, yep, it's a, it's a great place, and the SHOT Show is here, and uh, uh, a lot of advantages to living in this, yeah. this wonderful town. And, and the console vault, that's a made-in-the-U.S. product, isn't it? Yes, it absolutely is, Tom, and we've, uh, we take a lot of pride in that, and um, it's, it's something that's important to us. All right, I'm looking, uh, we've got our, just just put up our giveaway for this month, Console Vault. If you go to uh, guntalk.com slash win, you can enter for a chance to win it. It looks like uh, two grand prize winners receive their choice of any product from consolevault.com. Anything you guys make, huh? Anything that you that you want on our website, anywhere from the vehicle safes, to, uh, we've got home and office security products, Tom, and I think one of the products that I'm personally most proud of is uh, called our Red Herring. And what it is is it's a home office wall safe. It goes in between the studs and the wall. It's, it, it's a very simple uh, installation. But the beauty mm-hmm. of it is, Tom, it's got a tremendous diversion to it. When you, It looks identical to a fuse panel that you would have in any home. You open that up, yes. there's fuses, there's warning labels, and... Uh, it's, I'm looking uh, at it right now. That is cool looking. I mean, that absolutely looks like a fuse panel on your wall. And when you open it up, you actually have fuses. Cause so if somebody opens up part of it, the first uh, door there, they're going to say, oh, yeah, it's a fuse panel, and be done with that. That is that's cool. That's the beauty of it, Tom. And it has a, a secret access to it. Plus, there's multiple levels of security that you can set the safe at. And uh, on the minimal security, you can access this in the dark. You don't have to have any light. You can feel your way to open it. And mm-hmm. there's a quick release uh, secret component to it. And then, of course, uh, also our diversion lock is on that for higher security. Wow. Okay. And that's called the red herring. All that's, uh, you can take a look at it at consolevault.com. So, all right. So, you need to go to um, guntalk.com slash win, and you enter at the end of this month. Uh, two people are going to get their choice of anything the console vault makes. Tom, that is fabulous. Yep, we're proud to do it for you and the listeners, Tom. We're absolutely thrilled to do it. It's uh, such a wonderful base that you have out there that you've developed over the years, and we're very, very proud to be a part of it. Well, we appreciate it, and uh, I can testify as a good product. Got one in my car, so I'm, I'm a believer. All right, Tom, thank you so much for your help, and uh, you have a, a great week. All right, 866-TALK-GUN. By the way, don't forget to go to guntalk.com slash win to enter for a chance. Man, that would be cool to win that. And take a look at that red herring. I, that is slick as it can be, consolevault.com. 866-TALK-GUN. Tired of overpaying for one concealed carry holster after another that is flimsy, hard to hide, or just plain uncomfortable? At Alien Gear Holsters, less than $30 gets you a professional quality holster that's super stealthy and ultra comfortable. Every Alien Gear Holster is backed by a forever warranty, a 30-day test drive, and free shell trades for life in case you buy a different gun. AlienGearHolsters.com AlienGearHolsters.com Since 1997, Access Sites have been helping good guys take care of bad situations. 
the industry leader in gunfighter sights for pistols, shotguns, and rifles. Access sights are the upgraded solution to your defensive firearms. Learn more about Excess Sights and purchase them at excesssights.com. You can also order your new gun with Excess Sights already installed from companies such as Smith & Wesson, Ruger, Remington, Mossberg, and Marlin. If you need a gun, you need Excess Sights. Have you ever held a Walther? Walther handguns are an extension of your hand. From the moment you hold the ergonomic grip of a Walther, you feel the difference. Today, Walther continues its long tradition of expertise in firearm design with the introduction of three incredible new handguns. The smooth PPQM2, the tough PPX, and the cool PPKS22. Log on now at WalthurArms.com. Walther at your favorite retailer. Looking for shooting instruction but don't know where to go? Well, we have it, and you can access hours of training and safety videos, which you can watch on your home computer. On GunTalkTV.com, we have top competitive shooters, the best in self-defense trainers, and folks who have hunted all over the world, helping you learn which gun to buy, how to use it, how to store it safely, and everything else you need to be a safe and competent shooter. We also have gun makers showing off their newest rifles, shotguns, and handguns. Doesn't matter if you're a veteran shooter or a complete beginner. You'll find what you need at GunTalkTV.com. You can check it out for free, and you can get full access for only $5.95 a month. That gives you unlimited access to hundreds of videos, and we're adding more all the time. Run the videos over and over to make sure you understand what's being said. Skip around. You're in control. Get smarter, shoot better. Visit GunTalkTV.com. You already know Liberty Safes are great values. Now they're offering an even sweeter deal for Gun Talk listeners. At LibertySafe.com, click on the Fat Boy Safe and type in Tom. Liberty will give you up to $250 off your purchase. Protect the things you value most. LibertySafe.com, click the Fat Boy Safe. Promo code TOM, save up to 250 That's LibertySafe.com. LibertySafe.com. Want your opinion to make a difference? Log on to our website and take the Gun Talk poll. www.guntalk.com. Now, back to Tom. By the way, uh, you may have heard us talk about we've done a couple of weeks now doing the after show. When this uh, three hours is over, we'll be going to do some more gun talk, which we will be uploading to the website. You can get it off of iTunes, Stitcher, other services, or you can just go to guntalk.com slash listen. You can drill down, find it there, and download it. You don't want to miss out on uh, us talking about what we talked about on the show. And no, we're not going to talk about the callers. We're not going to say things about you we don't say on the air. We're pretty straightforward. If we wanted to say it, we'd say it on the air. Simple as that. Uh, but yeah, you can check out the after show show, if you will. A lot of things cooking. We will have uh, in just a few minutes, going to have uh, the president of Connecticut carry. A lot of misinformation coming out of Connecticut. A lot of people saying, yeah, they're confiscating guns there. He's saying, you know, guys, stop saying this stuff because it's actually doing us some harm. We'll have the, the real skinny from Connecticut. Uh, right now, I want to go to line two. Norma's with us out of Waco, Texas. Hello, Norma. You're on Gun Talk. Hi, Tom. Good to talk to you. Well, thank you for calling. I, I gather you are new to carrying guns. Yes, I am. I'm really a, a novice at it. I think I've um, just really started getting into... Uh, carrying maybe about a year, maybe a little bit over a year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and I know you had said, you know, you had wanted kind of a story of why, you know, when the the right. I guess well, the, yeah, what, what what got you into it? What made you decide? First, let me ask you a question. I'm, I'm just going to be mm-hmm. as personal, more personal than I should be. How old are you? Oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm 41. Okay, you're 41 years old and you decided that you want to carry a gun. Did mm-hmm. something happen that made you make that decision? Well, it was that Colorado movie theater shooting that happened mm-hmm. a little mm-hmm. over a year ago, I think. Um, ah. I just, um, my husband has always carried, and when I met him, um, he was carrying and he had been trying to talk me into it, and I was just, you know, no, no, I'm not going to do it. 
But I don't know, something happened right after that Colorado movie theater shooting, and I just, you know, couldn't imagine being somewhere that you're supposed to be safe and then all of a sudden be facing something like that. It was just awful, and, you know, movie theaters were supposed to be safe there, and we're not. When you think about it, I know what you're you're feeling. You're thinking about how horrible it would feel to be defenseless, to be unable to do anything about it. Yes, that's exactly why I got started carrying. After that, I told my husband, well, okay, I guess I really need to start, you know, really thinking about it. And I started doing Mm -hmm. a lot of research um, just on the Internet, looking at the different types of guns that, um, you know, I might be interested in, um, went to some gun shows with my husband. He's pretty experienced with them, so he kind of um, taught me a lot and um, held the guns and to see which one I felt thought I might be more comfortable with, things like that. Um, and then finally, I just um, took the class, and after that, I went ahead and got a Ruger LCP, so okay. I'm really happy with it. Have you uh, taken it out shooting a few times? Oh, yes, yes. We go out as often as we can, usually on the weekends. Okay. Let me ask you a question. Uh, Are you carrying your gun now most of the time? Most of the time, yes. Okay. Has it changed in any way how you feel about yourself or about situations when you carry? Um. Yes, it it has. I mean, I just feel, I guess, more secure. Um, And I don't want to give myself a false sense of security, but Mm -hmm. I do feel a little bit more, um, I guess, empowered or just knowing that if um, someone, you know, say I'm walking um, somewhere at night into a restaurant alone or what have you, that, you know, if someone were to come up to me and... Um, try and harm me in some way that I would be able to protect myself. Well, it gives you an option. I mean, it's not a guarantee, and I think we both know that. There's no guarantee is on all this, but it gives you an option that you didn't have before. Norma, let's thank you so much for sharing that story with me. I uh, I know a lot of people got a lot out of that. Thank you, ma'am, and uh, thank you for that call. I had a, uh, an email from, let's see, Pat in Katy, Texas. Pat says she was new to this uh, in... 2007, when she got started, she says, now 15,000 rounds and gun talk radio later, she feels very comfortable. Uh, said, so well, thank you. I appreciate that. She's listening, by the way, on uh, KNET 1450 in Palestine, Texas. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that, Pat. 866-TALK-GUNS. Uh, that's what we're asking is, how did you get into this in the first place? Rick is on line one out of Houston, Texas, wanting to know about a Ruger 375. What you going to go hunting, Rick? Tom, how you doing? I'm good. What you going to hunt? Uh, leopard, Namibia. Leopard in Namibia. Uh, why the Ruger 375? Well, uh, I've already got it. I wanted a big gun, and I looked, you know, the kind of pricing with the Ruger H&H. End up going with the Ruger, and mm-hmm. I'm trying to find a good bullet that shoots consistently with, and I really haven't found one yet. I've tried the Hornady 300 grains, and it's not giving me a good grouping. I mean, I'm assuming a, a gun like that out of the box ought to be, you know, a minute and a half would be fair for a big gun like that, but I'm getting still an inconsistent spread, so I'm looking for a good ammo that will work with it. But my question is for you is what have you heard about the gun? Have you heard good things about shooters, you know, about that gun? Oh, yeah, it's a, it's a great gun. It's a great caliber. Um, I'm just wondering about, you say you're getting about an inch and a half now at 100 yards? No, I'm getting no, I'm getting a real, it'll be on one, and then it'll be off three or four inches at 100 yards in the next shot. And, then, you know, I always let it cool down between shots, and then it's back, and then it's off. I'm just not, I don't think it's the scope. The scope is on there good. Um, you know, um, I mean, I got it in a cradle to make sure it's not moving. I'm just getting real inconsistent results right now. I'm going to suggest you do this. Take the scope off completely. Uh, Start over. Do everything over again. Put the scope back on. Tighten it up really well. My guess is it's scope. If that's not it, you may want to try a little bit of pressure underneath the barrel. Take the stock off. 
put one layer of business card in the barrel channel. So when you screw the stock and the barrel and assembly back together, it's putting a little bit of pressure on that barrel. A lot of times that'll take care of the problem. You don't have to agree with Tom to participate in the show. Call now with any of your concerns about guns, gun rights, or particular firearms, or suggestions for your shooting activity or personal protection. 1-866-825-5486. Gun Talk is coming right back. Having an interesting conversation over on uh, Twitter, I asked the question, what, why do you see so many people bad-mouthing using birdshot for self-defense in a home situation? People going, oh, it doesn't penetrate. Do some research. How about do some testing? Research, of course, in this case, is going online and reading what somebody else says. What I do is I go do some testing. I don't, I don't trust other people's tests, frankly. I like to do it myself. So I shoot through multiple walls. We build walls. We shoot through them. I shoot into multiple, multiple, multiple jugs of water. I want to find out what things actually do. I've actually cut down a lot of of timber, if you will, with shotguns in areas where we get a lot of saplings, one to two inches. So you can just cut them off with a shotgun using birdshot. I get it. If he's far away, it's not going to work. Okay, get it. I understand that. But that's not what we're talking about. When people are saying... I am concerned about overpenetration, something leaving my home and hitting somebody, going through the walls. Most homes, walk through your house, tell me how many places you can shoot further than 30 yards, or 30 feet, rather. Because at 30 feet, 10 yards, you've got an absolutely lethal package there. If you've got a home where you're liable to be shooting 60, 90 feet, Congratulations on having a nice big home. You may want to go to another option. There are no guarantees. But please, before you start spouting off, do some research or do this or do that. Take it out to the range and test it. And then you tell me how it worked for you. And tell me how much penetration are you looking for? Shoot something at five yards from the muzzle. One, two, three, four, five. No, I'm sorry. Correction. Five feet, not five yards. Five feet from the muzzle. 20 gauge, 12 gauge, I don't care. Bird shot, pick whatever size shot you want. Five measured feet yardstick from the muzzle. If you're shooting water, you better be wearing a raincoat because you're going to get wet. A lot of uh, folks imagining that doesn't work. I read about it on the internet. Really? I am so not impressed. You might actually want to go out and test it the way I have. But you know what? If you've tested it, let me know what you find out. Otherwise, just keep reading what's on the Internet and be impressed when people say, oh, it doesn't work. That's not tactical. That won't penetrate. Really? Hogwash. Horse manure. (laughs) And it just doesn't make any sense. Okay, it just doesn't. Uh, Let's see. Steve is on line three. Hey, in Reno. Hey, Steve. Uh, I'm correct. I said three. I'm at four. Line four is uh, Steve, I believe, if we still have him. You there, Steve? Hey, hey there. Yeah, there he is. Can you hear me? I got you. Remington Model 51. You looking for one of those? Uh, you know, I've been reading about it on the Internet. It looks pretty good. I've been carrying for 25 years, and uh, I downsized to basically a 380. Because it fit my pocket, and this one looks like it's going to be a full nine. It'll fit in my pocket still. Yeah, it, it probably will. But uh, I would say you want to look at one first. They told me that they were shipping a couple of months ago, but I haven't seen any yet. Uh, we're supposed to get a couple of them here, so I don't know if they're in production, if they're actually shipping, or what's going on. It's not teeny tiny pocket pistol. It's more like a Ruger LC nine. Size, uh, she, Smith & Wesson Shield. At least that was my impression of it. I haven't laid one on top of the other, but looks like an XDS, a Spring Farmer XDS. More of an inside the waistband holster, not slide into your pocket size. 
Uh, well, of course, it depends. I mean, if you got big pockets, who knows what you can get in there. And I've seen people pocket some pretty good-sized pistols before. So, anyway. Hey, if you got any experience testing birdshot, I'd love to hear that. we got some folks over on Twitter. Join us over there. I'm at Gun Talk. Interesting conversation going on where people are saying, I don't know what I'm talking about. Well, sometimes they're right. No black helicopters here. Just the facts about gun rights and gun ownership. This is Gun Talk.